Stockholm, are you feeling it? No, that's not enough. Stockholm, can you feel it? Well, here we go, the first semi-final of the major. G2 versus Heroic in a best of three. We're starting on Nuke with G2 on the CT side and Heroic on the T side. And I just, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously picked by Heroic. But that's not a surprise. I think this is going to be a struggle. I think every single round is going to be a battle. Indeed, indeed, there will be Andrews because both of these teams are evenly matched. That's the beauty of it. The fact that Nico is playing lights out the best major of his career. He is sitting at the top rated player in the tournament going into this match right now. And he blew our minds against NIP, absolutely dominated them. So if Nico can bring that kind of level here for Heroic, it's going to be hard for Heroic to deal with it because I don't know if anybody, if anybody on Heroic can match the peak of Nico at his best. I don't think anyone can right now. I mean, th that's why the story is building up so nicely because he, he may have to go to the simple levels to find an opponent that's going to be able to shut him down when he's playing like he is right now. The Heroic, they're going to have their hands full. Like you're right, just with Nico alone. But the rest of that G2 squad is looking so good right now. Um, I mean, I, some of the some of the bombsite anchoring that's been done by Amanek with the AWG has looked really solid. It's looked really good. That in itself can uh, can get you over a couple of rounds. And Hunter, like you said, you start to to boo him. It apparently has the inverse effect. He just he doubles down, triples down, and plays it even better. There we go. The countdown has begun. We're going to head into the match. Pistol rounds are notoriously difficult to predict and figure out. I'm going to take a crack at it here. They do have two smokes, actually, on the CT side. Kind of interesting if it's going to be a retake on that B-bomb side. A lot could happen. Here we are. Let's get this match underway. Heroic already kind of leaning outside, blowing up the door, maybe trying to bait out some counter utility. Actually doing a fairly good job of that right now, trying to really put some pressure on that squeak door. But everyone else has gone down secret. Well, I said everyone. I was lying. Cadian has made his way here, jump us, and kicked out of the sky. What a nice flick, the opening kill of the semi-final. Of course, it had to go to Nico. Of course, had to be a headshot too, but the bomb is going to get planted, and Heroic have got plenty of time now to get into post-plant positions before G2 can start knocking on that door. So, there is an opening here for Heroic to get some damage. You can see Cadian thinking about getting proactive, thinking about getting on that flank. He knows now, he hears the footsteps, and he's communicating this to his teammates going into this hold. Ooh, a little bit early on that reveal. They, they're going to be drawn back. No, they can't. They can't focus on Kadian. If he escapes, they wasted their time. Nice headshot from Kadian. That'll make a difference for Jack and Amanek. They're going to come back into it. Tessis and Stout. Oh, they're already inside of that. Defusing and trying. There was a kit in there. Jax and Amanek. They're going to have to go quick on this one. Amanek but tidy on his own. Trying to get that defuse. Oh, but he gets stabbed in the opening round. Kadian, what a hero. He threw a wrench at things going into that retake. They did not expect to find him on the flank like that, and that is valuable time that he buys for his teammates to defend that bomb as well. So, fantastic play from the IGL. A little bit of a tough start there for Shush, that's for sure, but this is everything we were hoping for here in a pistol round between these two teams. So evenly matched, it has to come down to a knife fight and a smoke bomb. There you go. What a way to begin. Down like that, one versus two, and you get stabbed inside of the smoke trying to get that defuse. That's what we needed. Second round is coming up, and we do have a, an auto shotgun on Jax. Well then, hello. Playing to the meta. Both of these teams have been very good about oh. picking up uh, pistol rounds. They've also been very good about converting the following round. And it's looking like we're gonna get more of the same here, although Amanek is chiming in. Jax with the auto shot, he gets a kill. I was not expecting that. They were so flashed when they came out of the hut, but somehow they managed to get the double kill to MAC-10 anyway. A little bit delayed on the bomb plant because they're worried now that if they go for it right away, that they're going to get shut down while they're in the middle of the bomb plant. This should still be the round for Heroic, but who knows what that auto shotgun's going to be doing. Kadian spotted out. Jax trying to see if he could just shoulder it in, but he's going to miss this opportunity here, I think. Now he might just be in a crossfire when he walks out, and that's going to be uncomfortable. There's the opportunity. Shush will save his captain, and that's always good news. Nico and Amanek, two versus three here, and they're going to do some more damage. I don't think they can win the round. No, this is so tough, and it just keeps playing to heroic strengths. That a 90% win rate in second rounds after they won the pistol round so far this tournament. They are looking so good. That is very hard to do, especially in the era of uh, Deagles. 
where you just can walk into a trap and it can just be your round done and dusted. We almost saw that with the two kills coming in from G2 where it got a little hairy there for Heroic, but they kept their cool and they played the post plant perfectly on the upper side, making sure that there was nowhere for G2 to get in and flank. The one chance was there for Jax and he got shut down immediately as soon as he showed himself. Yeah, very unfortunate. Probably needed to find that kill in the in the first round mm -hmm. when he was in the in the hut there, but had to let it go just a bit longer. Third round is coming up. We start the scout in play. And a couple of deagles. So we've seen already what Nico could do with Deagle. So every time you see that on the board, you've got to be careful. Nice vent dive and a huge stack towards the ramp room to pop it off. I like to see this early from Heroic as well. They're showing G2 this early. It's like showing, show, just saying, hey, this is something that we're willing to do and we're going to be able to stick to it pretty quickly here and we're going to go for it right at the beginning. So now G2, they already have to take that into account going forward in this half that Heroic are going to be willing to go for vent dives. And so that will make them tweak their defense on that upper site. You have to keep that in mind. Heroic, in the meantime, they've got the smoke wall up outside and Jax has bounced out. It's always very uncomfortable when you're playing a slow run like this on the T side, and then you you hear that one deagle headshot ring through, and you think, oh no, they're going to speed it up behind. So that is the big upside here. If they've only lost down, and they're going to be able to get in there and get the bomb plant, I think that's going to be fine. It makes you wonder what Stun saw. What Stun saw for Heroic to decide, okay, we need to hit upper sight instead of lower. Did he see multiple targets from G2 down there when he died? Because that would have been the tell where Heroic can think, okay, defense will be weaker on the upper side, so let's go there. Him dying at the time that he did is actually perfect for Roy because they're still in that, that yep. crossroads where they can decide to go upper or lower. So quick call there from Heroic, making the adjustment. Shush, gonna find Nico in the end. Hunter with the deke. Let's see, does it, if you pick up Nico's deagle, does that make you hit more headshots? Does your headshot rating just go up like 20%? Is that how it works? Yeah, it has to. You never change it out. Just try and keep it alive. <laughs> yeah, forever here. Never Whatever you gotta do. Gun, never wash it or anything, just keep it cool. Third round, though, for the Danish side. It's a pretty good start here, but the real test is coming up. G2 will be picking up the rifles, and I'm real curious what's going to happen out in that yard, because I think Heroic, like most of the Danish teams right now, they love that yard aggression. They love not just going down secret, they love actually flanking all the way past the CT spawn. And if you allow them to get in there, well then, you're, you're going to lose track of where they are. You're going to lose one player somewhere, and it's going to be a bad time. They're playing on land, guys, just in case you're wondering. So no 40% loss there for Nip this time. We can pretty much guarantee that. <laughs> G2 won that straight up. 100% loss, seven. 100% loss is what happened. <laughs> Early nades, though, and a quick change of pace here from Heroic, hoping perhaps to get out there quick onto the upper bomb site. Or at least keeping G2 aware of the option. G2 really trying to shut that down, though. They committed a lot of utility to this early on just to make sure that Heroic can't get comfortable up here on the upper site. They're almost out of nades on the heroic side. That's kind of a mystery, isn't it? We've got a minute and 20 seconds. You have one smoke if you wanted to plant down lower. Good timing for Nico. Gets the kill, throws a nade. That could have killed easily Cadian. He's on one health, so lucky to be alive. And then instead of backing off, he just doubles down on the aggression. Goes out into the garage and almost spotted by Tessis. But it's a four on four. We have under a minute now. And it looks like G2, rather than waiting, want to go and try and find some information. They're going to find Stown. Good kill for Eminem. Well, that's such a big deal. Getting proactive. G2 need to show that they're willing to get out there and make info plays themselves. That's at about that time, 50 seconds, you know, on that CT side. If you haven't seen anything yet, you need to start pushing. You need to start taking risks to get info, to figure out where Heroic are going. And so now Heroic have to worry about that point of entry. You can see they're only just now going to start working their way over here. But with 30 seconds left, Heroic are getting close to the point of no return. They're going to have to just accelerate in, and they're going to run right into Nico. Yeah, this is going to be such a shutdown. They did have Tessus down below, but he still needed the rest of the team to open up some kind of avenue here. That's a strong headshot. There are more people defending. Cadian is low from earlier out in the yard. He's going to find a headshot, but he cannot win the round anymore. It's 10 seconds here. He's trying to run back in. There should be absolutely no way. Five on the clock. Orbs on the other side. Actually, if he can find that, that's still a pretty big win. Time has run out. Does he want to risk it? He's going to stay put. All right. Good defense for G2. Bit of a shame that they lost next year in the ramp at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, strong, strong style out of the way here with the rifles. That's good to see. 
It's a terrific start so far for both of these teams, I think. Now the G2 managed to get on the board early. They don't let Heroic start to put too many rounds on that T side. This has been a bit of a comfort pick for Heroic, this map. They only lost it once so far this tournament, and that was 16-14 to Entropic, who have been playing out of their minds, who are a real threat to these teams. So for Heroic to lose it that close, you know that this is a very good map for them right now. So G2, they're going to have to be on their A game to put a halt to the Danish Terrors here. Early pot shot put through the smoke outside by Amanek. With that smoke wall up, he's not going to have access to the information. You can see that they kind of hang around out here, just waiting to see if G2 are going to try and push for info. But also, it lets them get down into the lower halls towards that B-bomb site, Heroic. You could almost feel it in this game right here that the, the just what's on the line has just increased so much. Everyone is oh, a yeah. little bit more tentative. We are not seeing that all-out wild battle coming in. That's kind of what I expect of Heroic. That's what we've seen so much out of them. But I think everyone is feeling just a bit more nervous because it's a semi-final, and that's what it does. You feel the pressure every step of the way. Refresh, started to fall back a bit. Nico gonna almost come find him. That's some, that's some uncanny timing. Nico, he's walking forward. Refresh is there to take him down. Nexa on the other side. That's a really good trade. Important stuff for Nexa. Now Nexa has hit his, has had his moment so far this major as well. He has certainly stepped up. Not only as an IGL, but as a fragger, he can get those trades. And we're getting into it now. 35 seconds on the clock. Hunter, he's got the line on it. But there is a way in here to the bomb side for Heroic, and they're going to commit. If the, if the bomb had come in from Mini instead of from Heaven, that would have been a nightmare. Good shot from Kadian, but they do have the bomb on the site. They're going to get the bomb plant here. This is a good return from Heroic. If they can get this round, it looks like they will. Hunter and Nexa are already backing out. I, this is actually a really, really cool, it's, this is something we don't get to see nearly enough because this kind of strategy from the T side doesn't happen so often. Mm. But if you lose Mini and Heaven, then it actually can make a lot of sense for the CT side to push in and occupy Hot and Squeak like they did. So you're kind of almost reversing roles. Suddenly you're, yeah. the, you're the attacking team, even though you're on the CT side. And they were trying to snipe them as they made the jump from Mini into the A-bomb site. But the bomb is coming in from heaven. That's a crucial detail in that strategy. That's exactly it, because you know your hunter is just sitting there crossing his fingers, hoping that the bomb is going in through main, through mini. Focused on the side of Heroic, though, as they pick up their fourth round on this T side of a new G2 can save two guns, though, which is interesting. They are going to have just enough money to get a buy going here on G2 side. So Data V, the M4, a couple of M4s to work with. Jax doesn't have a whole lot of cash, though, so he's going to go for the Deagle just so he can afford to get some nades. This is still going to be a decent buy coming in here from G2, so it's not done yet. But a tough beginning. Lose that second rifle round. Down a couple of rounds here. It's going to be a bit more explosive. Nico definitely spotted that, but his teammates on the bomb side they were blind for a second. That could have been so scary. Nice attempt. I love the... Just to, just to essentially flex on them, you run onto that site. If you get that flashbang down right, you get the entry you need. But now instead, they're playing four versus five. That doesn't feel quite as good. No. But that's the view of it. I think you're right, Anders. It's just trying to be unpredictable here, Heroic, not to fall into a pattern that G2 can pick up on. They're throwing some slow rounds in there, just like they're throwing some very quick, aggressive rounds. And all of this early. So G2 are going to just, they're not going to be able to get comfortable here on this CT side and fall into a rhythm. Kadian, though, this is clever. Angle over the top, and there's the shot. Drops Nexa, brings it back to a four on four. Opening is here now. With that smoke down, there is a gap, however, and Hamaneki had a chance to bring it back to get his team the man advantage. Instead, now Heroic have access to the lower bomb site. So they can make their way down there. Test is going to clear out the control room. Dropping the bomb down. Don't know who's going to be planting it right now. Someone needs to cover. He's down. The fact that he goes down is so critical here. Maybe G2 can win this round back. They are in a four on three. There are no more nades on the heroic side. They do have a single Molotov on Amanek, but no smokes for the defuse. So that's the lay of the land right here as we go into the retake. And this is a critical one for G2. If they lose this one, they're out of money and heroic are off to such a powerful start on Nuke. Sneaking through all three of them. Coming around the corner, the AWP holding the back line. And Tessis turning for the grenade. He goes for the spray. It's just going to be the one. Nice shot from Katie in point blank range, taking down Nico. And Shush will follow it up now. Amanek all on his own. He get one of them, but he knows there's no time. He can't even smoke it and did what he did, almost did in the pistol round. He has to just run away. It is unfortunate. Great attempt at a retake, but it will be heroic to pick up another round. And I think at this moment, now you're going to let this round go. This is going to be a round of eco coming up based around this AWP. So if Amina can get in a position to find a kill early with that, 
terrific, although Heroic have been throwing those nades out in uh, Yard, those smoke walls, so he doesn't really have too many opportunities early to come up with anything. If he can be in the right place at the right time, that's going to be good, but I expect to see a timeout called pretty soon here from G2. They may want to actually start t having a bit of a chat about what they need to do to change up going into the next buy round. Heroic again with the change of pace, straight into ramp, no respect. There's Nico, one headshot already. Traded immediately by Stalin, but then Jax with the peak takes one of his own. Man advantage for G2. Oh, he gets taken away so quickly. That's unfortunate. It would have been really cool if they could have just settled down a bit in that four versus three, take some time to think about what was coming next, but still, it's winnable. Emanek has got that AWP back at the A-bomb site. Jax and Nexa playing either ramp or outside. Could really be anything at this point. Nexa's walked all the way down, so... Let's just see, seventh round here. This is the kind of round, we talked about this a lot in the quarterfinals, but if you win a round like this, it's gonna fire the team up. It's gonna get everyone hyped. So a lot is riding on this as well. Jax tries to get that job done, not quite, and the spray is good. Smoke going up right in front of Refresh. And that will be a three on two now. Still have 45 seconds, and you know what? Credit to Heroic for not just pushing into a bomb site rapidly, trying to get something happening. They're really slowing it down. That is a nice part of their game that is going to be key if they want to take this whole match. Next up, looking the wrong way, almost had the angle there, but he's down being real careful. And Amanek should save the orb once again. Indeed. So, Heroic successfully threading the needle, finding the pistols. Really difficult for, uh, for G2 to find any kind of footing in that round. And so far, I mean, Heroic that's not as dominant as G2 in man advantage situations. G2 have the 81% win rate, 5v4, but Heroic are right behind them with 76. I mean, both of these teams, it's real fun, actually, if you look at the statistics of both of these teams lined up side by side. Individually, you have guys who are off the charts like Nico, but as a team, the two of them are almost indistinguishable. They're so close in terms of performance. That's why this semifinal could be one of the most exciting we've had in so long, because these are very evenly matched teams going right up against it. I mean, right now, I would say I'm a little bit shocked. I thought... I thought G2 was going to come in just wrecking them in that third round because that's what they've done so far to everyone they've met throughout. Yes. They're, just, they're off to such a hot start. You see they've Nico. yet to drop a map this tournament. Yeah, that's true. And if you think about it too, the way that Nico has started off some of these games where he's just, he's at 15 kills while everyone else is at four or five, you know, just is such a rapid start for him. A bit slower this time. He's at six right now. They're going to need to start to wake up. Six to one in favor of Heroi is... Not a nightmare yet, but it started to feel like it. Oh, here we go. Trying to change up the pace a little bit here, G2. Molotov behind the smoke, just trying to slow him down. If Heroic were trying to beeline it towards Secret to get to the lower side, Nico could still put some shots. And yeah, they're charging him. They're putting some pressure on. He was close enough to hear that refresh now. This is going to be the game of cat and mouse. Who turns the corner at the right time? Oh, this is scary. You're right. <laughs> Who's going to find who? Nico, he's a bit paranoid. He might have heard some steps. He's certainly thinking about it. Oh, but there's a plan B. And Kadian is it. Oh, he just threads the needle. If he peeks any wider, he's at the minimum going to get trade and might even die before he gets the kill. That is, that's a very narrow margin to pick up that kill. The Makes it a finest. four on five. Sick place. The finest margins there. The, that is incredible. Nico gets away with that highway robbery, and Refresh is just going to be left shaking his head, wondering what could have gone better there. As Kadian is now trying to find a gap to work with out here in the yard, Nico's peeled off. He's got that AUG, and so he can play a bit further back and still be a real threat. As far as Heroic are concerned, now that they've got Tessus working his way down to the lower halls, this is still a matter of finding a weakness, and G2 have really established a strong defense everywhere on the map by the looks of things. They have, and even more worrisome, there's only 27 seconds left. They really need to find an entry. They need to go quick. If anything screws up now, they're not going to have time to recover the bombs. So Hunter is up on the hut already, waiting. He's sensing that someone's down there. Oh, the timing. They try and make their way down, but Shush is going to get left behind. Missed shot from Amanek. 10 seconds on the clock, and next, a strong defense, shutting down any attempt to get in here. Five seconds now left. Kadian tries to get the job done, but Hunter will find him. That's rock solid. They absolutely held their cool there. And that's a moment where G2 could easily start to feel nervous. You could actually see it on Hunter when he was up and out. He was like standing up like, yeah. am I going to see someone? Should I do something? It's really hard to stay put, even though it seems like they're not doing much. 
the thing is, is that he waited on the, his teammate to take the first contact there. That's what has to happen. If that's sort of, you have to trust your teammates, essentially, is what I'm trying to say here, Anders. If you know that yeah. your teammate has got an angle, you need to trust him to hold that angle and then react based off the information. And that's how it played out. Nico also getting aggressive in the yard. I mean, to be fair, these guys actually had nades. It just wasn't a weird eco round with a couple of rifles or light on the grenades. That time, it felt like G2 had everything they needed to start getting their game plan going with some aggression outside in the yard. Jax, he might actually be in some trouble here. Molotov goes down, and he's going to smoke it off. Not trouble at all. He is going to absolutely shut it down. Big double kill for him. And Nexa, burning refresh to a crisp. Kadian and Stown left. That is really well handled. Good wall bang. Hunter goes down. The bomb is committed to the bomb site. He made that look so easy, Jax, and it is definitely not. Yeah. You know, he's going to be in trouble, and Jax heard you, and he took that personally, Anders. Uh, decided, to <laughs> decided to take it out on Heroic in the end. This is going to be incredibly frustrating, though, for Heroic. And their money, they finally succeeded in whittling down Heroic's bank, G2. Kadian, Stan, they've got a couple of rifles, but there's no money to fall back on. If they don't get a bomb plant here, <laughs> the next round is going to be so tight. Trying to get a little bit of a boost in the middle of it. A scary peak with Jackson. He's not going to give up. A triple for him in the round. And there are so many problems with playing the back of that silo when that Molotov comes in through the ceiling. Yeah. Because you have a hard choice to make. You can either do what he did and smoke it off, or you can try and run outside of the range of the Molotov. But there probably are going to be flashbangs following it up. So while you're figuring out what you want to do, flashes are raining into your face. The fact that he actually went on the left side of the silo means he was, he was maybe even covered. He, the flashes maybe wouldn't have hit him in the same way. It worked out so well. That's incredible. Adjustments being made, and here we go. Hard round of eco coming up here for Heroic. They finally tap their bank, and G2 can get a round where they should feel pretty good. Going up against opponents with Glocks and P250s for the most part. There is a Tech 9 on refresh. We'll see if he can get that into action. Wait. Down the vents they go, all four. A little bit late on the spray, but they catch up on it. Nico's in position to cut them down. Heroic not quite making it to that lower bomb site. And they really need a bomb plant in this round, Anders. Oh, that's unfortunate. I think half of the half of that push got lost in the mist. Like a Stephen King novel. They just there's no <laughs> monsters out there, Semla. You got Hunter and Nico, the monsters yeah, just waiting. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's that's devastating. I mean, not that that was a high chance round anyway, but that's the kind of round where you'd love to get down. Maybe take a crack at Nico and then plant the bomb, but when when half the team is getting lost in there, it doesn't work nearly as well. That guy's on fire. That guy's pumped up right now, loving it, getting all the attention. Yeah. And rolling with it, he's, he's, he's winning. And so attack timeout called. As we get back into the thick of things here, it is going to be G2 starting to actually get some momentum shifting their way. Full by once again on their side, all the nades that they need. Stout, Mr. Lucky Shot. Oh, I see. Kills while flashed. So he had one kill while flashed. So that's, that's luck. That's all skill. The pros, doesn't matter. <laughs> flashed or not, they know the angles. How many players have we seen die today? Yeah, at this level, we make our own luck. That's exactly it. They manufacture it. Still, four rounds on the board for G2. They would like to double that going into this, uh, into the remainder of this half. So we'll see if they're going to be capable of it or not. Heroic now deciding to change it up a little bit with some presence. A little bit more passive out in the yard. Not necessarily getting up there and fighting early this time. Let's see if Nico, yeah, hard spot. He sees it coming. Shush takes his teammate out, though. Hunter, out of the picture. It's scary. I was going to say, I, I'm a bit shocked that Heroic aren't trying more, but I guess they are now again. They spotted someone at the, at the secret stance. They could probably guess it was going to be Nico, so maybe Refresh sees that as an opening to go take Garage. Then Amanek on the hunt, but he's just almost getting the kill. Shush will take him down. Quick return from Nexa. He is so blind, but he nearly gets the kill anyway. Tessa is lucky to be alive in that moment. And now it's a two on four. Oh, heroic. They're getting away with a couple of things in this round. Oh, they are. I mean, four health on Tessa. That's an absurd. You did manage to get the kill on Shush, but yeah, they've had a couple things go against them here, G2. And now it's a question of whether or not they're going to be in position here. Refresh doesn't even need to get the kill. It's Nico instead to trade it one for one. Tessa hits the shot from on low, though. It doesn't matter if he's got four health. If he's got an AWP, one bullet does the trick. And Heroic, just like that, back in the driver's seat. They've got seven rounds now. And G2 are going to have to spend all of that money that they've been saving up over the past couple of rounds. <laughs> yes, they will. 
Actually, I'm impressed they even have that much money. Even after the buy here, they actually, that's, that's kind of impressive to think about. And it's gonna, it's gonna have to be what they rely upon. They need to, to bring a lot more here into the first half. 7-4, obviously not a completely devastating lead, but it is looking very good at the moment. And the same slow start here for Heroic. Keeping it cool, Nico outside, Amanek gonna be making his way up the secret stands as well. Feels like Heroic were clearly expecting some shenanigans on the part of G2 out here in Yard, with the way that they're holding these angles. Yeah. They were expecting G2 to start trying to throw some haymakers out here, trying to get aggressive. We saw a lot of that against NIP in G2's quarterfinal that they won. They won that 2-0, but it was beastly what they were doing. Amanek, instead of falling back, he just goes forward to take down Tessis. That's right, they were expecting something. I just don't think they were expecting Not that the double late down. Around. Crazy. Think of you're walking up those secret stairs with the AWP is a nightmare. Even if you have, you had Nico out there as well, but if someone peeks you from the silo at that moment as you're getting behind the red container, it probably won't work out well. Good kill and return here, refresh though. Nico's challenging him. AK versus M4. He's got a job to do, trying to get back into it. Nexa still in the back behind the bomb site. Trying to see if he could maybe defend it a while longer here in the two on three. Trish is down and out. Nexa with a strong defense. Kadian. One versus three. Bomb is planted. He's going to go down. Amanek just holding that right hand side. Again, good moves for Amanek. Instead of trying to be the hero, run in on your own to fight him, hold that one side. Wait for the teammates to show up. If he steps out into it, you win the round. Otherwise, he's got him boxed in and he can't escape. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Focused on the side of G2 though now because they've got a few rounds on the board. They've got five rounds on the board. There's three rounds possible left in this half. And G2, like I said, hoping to get at least eight of them. This is really cool for Mamanek though, the fact that he went for that late push outside of the yard. Heroic were expecting some early aggression from G2. Just not expecting it to happen at the minute mark of all things. So G2, just that little stutter step, that little just change of pace there. Catching Heroic out, and that's all G2 needed. And if, I mean, if G2 can win this round, Heroic are going to be right back in the doldrums again. So Nico, early spray, early fight, just in case Heroic were trying to go for the drop again. Not going to be the case. But they did screw up the smoke. There's a huge gap here for Nico to take advantage of. Yeah, there is. <laughs> that's going to be an easy shot if they decide to walk past. They probably won't. Instead, they might have to use another smoke when they only have one of them, so that is kind of devastating. He pressures down, Nico, spray, not successful. He is very good, and even at the long range spray, but Tessis will beat him to the punch. It does make it uh, four on four now. Amanek holding the ramp for a while longer. So they're already checking out Lobby. I feel like no one is there, although. Not clear of whether or not Heroic might actually reoccupy the lobby, lobby after they've checked it. It's down, great position for a headshot. Oh, G2, don't throw this round away. That's crazy patience playing off from Stavins to just hold the line like that. He is just praying that nobody's on hut. Gonna peek at him and it works out wonderfully. Now they're back into it. Although they are <laughs> waiting for it what? with the firing squad. Stavins stacked on top of his teammate's head, headshot on Amanek. Two-man advantage now for Heroic going into the upper bomb side. Jack's not able to transfer the spray. Tezis again surviving with more health. It's all on Nexa now in a 1v3. They build a little totem pole in the middle of lobby. That's sick. You're, you're not expecting that. That is so rare. I don't think I've ever seen that. Nexa now. This would be the kind of round that if you clutch it again, that'll get the team fired up and get them back into the mix. He's looking for a kill, but the problem is he has to get one so early. And it's almost done already. A little bit of a peek there. Now they know where he is. The element of surprise taken away. Nade on the other side will not kill anybody. And a bit of a peek. He's going to get the kill on Shush, but time is already so low. He's going to go straight for it, try and hold it down, and hope that no one peeks him. No. As soon as he fakes it, it's probably done. Refresh will take him down. It's another round for Rory. Eight to five in their favor. Refresh played that perfectly, but again, there is no weakness on Heroic in that sense. They can all clutch, they can all play missile, they can all play rifle, they can all, it, it's just like this entire team, that's one of the main strengths of this roster is that they're all capable of everything. It's amazing. It's what's carried them deep into tournaments and it's what's gotten them into the semifinals here in Stockholm. Heroic a real threat. But with eight rounds on the board now on this T side, Nuke is still is much more even than it's ever been before. True can go 8, 7, 9, 6, and you're still not feeling like it's the end of the world, but you know that G2 would have liked to have started strong here, winning the half on the CT side. 
It's so interesting because this match right now feels like Heroic have shown up with a plan and they're just executing it round and round. They look really solid. And you're kind of, I'm just waiting for that moment when the mental switch happens for G2, when they sort of realize, all right, this is the kind of fight that we're going to be having, and now we're going to we're going to bring the fight to them. I feel like that hasn't really happened yet, so some tension in the air here as we head into the 14th round. It, they've got to find some way to unlock this game for them because right now Heroic are kind of getting away with more than I was expecting, actually. Once again, we're in this weird duel where the opponents can't really see each other. It's all about a guessing game. Who's going to be where? Flash over the top. Nico electing to play mega passive. That's about as far back as he can, barring CT side, CT spawn rather. Nexus is the only one down here. They're not gonna fight him just yet. It can be a pretty quick drop of the rest of them up at the A bomb site. Just down goes down. That's a pretty good start. They can get down to help out Nexa fairly early. Put steps down below. He actually does get the one kill, but Shush will be there for the trade. I still think that's not that bad. They can be there quickly for the retake. They're in a four on three, so. Anything is still possible here for G2. They have a smoke, they have no... Oh, they have a kit on Nico. And a nice headshot for Hunter to take down KD. And now Shush and Tess is two on four. They should not be winning this round. Very hard to hold as the entire G2 team comes in from the ramp. It's a good headshot for Tessis. He can't get more than that. Now the Galil left on its own. Nice shot there. Still so much more to come. There's plenty of time on that bomb. One defuse, one covering that smoke as Shush is on the other side. They're not quite sure. He doesn't guess the angle. They're still on it. Two seconds left and Shush, he has got no idea. He's a bit late to the party as it will be G2 to pick up the round. Impeccable stuff and it is always a little bit uh, nerve wracking to watch G2 go into these retakes when they're all coming from the same direction. You've noticed that most, multiple times now on these retakes on the lower site. They're not trying to divide up and split from different sides. They're kind of grouping up into a death ball and just using the weight of numbers to get them onto the bomb site to keep trading their way into it. We end up in a 2v1 there, and that's exactly according to plan as far as G2 are concerned. So long as they can trade somebody to get the info, it's fine, it works. And then it's just having faith that you're going to be able to defend your teammate as he gets that defuse. So that's a close run thing there for G2, hoping to pick up the last round, and this is not a strong buy at all for Heroic. No, so good chance here. It is just a single AK running into Mini, and they're gonna dive down the vent again. They're straight on it. That was Kadian just on a rampage into the main of A, and now they're gonna be down below with the bomb. Shush is the one carrying it. They should be able to get a really quick bomb plant here. They don't have any nades once again, so the after plant will no doubt be difficult for Heroic, but at least they put some pressure on here in the 15th round. Molotov is down, waiting for them, but G2, Jax, yeah, that's a must-win battle. Taking down any chance of a flank, and now it's just down to a double Galil and an AK-47. Not that convincing at the moment. Stown is going to be going down. Amanek waiting for the flank in case anyone was going to show up. Tess is inside of the smoke. He finds one in the spray. Oh! He jumps down, that is a move. He's ready for another fight here. He's almost out of health. Amanek around the corner will drop him and they'll find Shush as well. Man, that is scary, but they're gonna be on it. They're gonna be winning a seventh round G2. That is a critical way to get back into the first half. Those are some of the craziest rounds as well to have it play out that way, but the communication has been on point from G2. Instant reactions. Once they knew where the guy was playing from, they reacted to it immediately. There was such a small window there for Heroic to take advantage of, but what a strong half still from Heroic. Eight, eight rounds on the T side of Nuke. You can consider that a one half, and now you get to go into the CT side. Exist. This is the chance for him to communicate again. The coaches can only communicate during halftime and during tactical timeouts. So if this has got anything to lend to the table here for Heroic, this is his moment to chime in. Wow. Eight to seven. It did not look like it was going to go down that way. I really was worried that we are going to be seeing like an 11-4 first half here in favor of, of Heroic. So even though they win the first half, I feel like, I mean, G2 started to wake up a bit. Even worse still, Nico is starting to wake up. Yes. He's on top for his team. He is looking good once again. And that has to be a bad sign for G2. Now on the T side, setting up a little bit of ramp aggression while Nico's working outside with a P250. He's got that long range one tap potential. And he's got Hunter here, so maybe an A crunch? They could do anything. They could actually just make this up on the spot. They could also crunch the lobby, yeah. Or oh, sorry, the ramp. I'm gonna go for it. It's Wrapping all the way around through hell into heaven. And yep, once again, Heroic relocate out of the bomb site so they don't get shot from the high ground. 
kind of a classic move, but now they have to retake it, and that will not be easy. Yep, there's the protocol, but you're right, they've changed places. Nico finds a headshot on Stav to kick things off. Refresh, though, once again, showing up for his team. Tess is helping out as well. Man advantage for Heroic as they go into the retake now, and Tess is just brawling it out, hoping to find another one. He almost caught him reloading there. Would have been a nightmare. No kid currently picked up. Don't know if Stown had one, but if not, they are going to have to move really quickly. They're running out of time much faster. Nexa, Hunter, and Jackson on the other side. And Nexa, he's the late look coming out of the hut. Not even going to be needed, but he could have definitely found a kill. Jackson instead with a double. Hunter with a double. And G2 well on their way now. Winning the pistol in the second half. They are... They're a little bit slow out the gate, but you can feel they're waking up now. That looked uh, so clean and comfortable. Nico is able to spot Stavon crouching in the corner there. That is the last place Stavon wants to be. And then on top, this is the thing. It just opens up all of the angles for the post plant. It's a real nightmare for Heroic at that point. And yeah, Nico, there we go. Popping off a little bit, showing some emotion, showing some hype. We're tied up 8-8. Eight to eight. Full buy on the side of G2, forced by for Heroic. They did manage to get a scout out on Katie. We'll see if he can get anything. Stout again, lucky through the smoke with the tag. Yeah, could have been scary there. He just stops and waits, maybe expecting someone to flash their way through. Oh, this is cool. We don't get to see this very often here in the lower hall. Overlapping lines of defense here. Heroic just hoping against hope that Nico's going to walk into their crossfire. They're actually going to come look for him. That might shock him a little bit. Yeah, he comes back and there's two people waiting. He'd already taken a peek down there, so that's really frustrating when you come back to a position that you just checked and find someone occupying it. Kadian, missed opportunity. Oh, he is quick up the ladder, climbing away. Amanek trying to chase him down. How is he so hard to find? Oh, Kadian with the kill on Amanek. That took a lot. This is out now, chaos now, though. But with 50 seconds left, there's still time for G2 to maneuver here. They could go for this bomb plant and just stick it immediately and really start to put the pressure back on Heroic. Once that bomb is ticking, it's on Heroic then to get back into the bomb site. Ball it's off to buy time as well. That's so nasty. Refresh. Gonna chime in with one of his own. Nexa has to win this fight and he gets it done. Two on two. Huge battle there with the Mac 10. That's important. And yep, the Molotov for Refresh doesn't really do anything at all. Missed opportunity there. And Stout he realizes not gonna happen now. Might as well save the scout. That was, that was a crazy hunt to try and, and find Kadian. <laughs> Talk about, I mean, that's so nuts that it's Kadian as well, that he's just so quick to get out of there. Gets a kill as well. Filthy. But it's not enough here for Heroic because this is going to be a round of hard eco coming up for them in the next one. G2 holding on to the rifles. They saved two Galils going into it. It was a bit more expensive than they would have liked. But what's really counting here for G2 is that they get the rounds on the board. Ninth round here on this T side. And they're starting to show a little bit as well what they're what the, the game plan could be here. Getting Nico out in the yard, they get the smoke wall down. They're just already showing that um, Heroic are gonna have to take that into account. It is pretty much the bread and butter with the smoke wall out in the yard on Duke. Ooh. Ooh. We got a chance. We got some French fans still here. We see the French flags. Haven't heard the Marseillaise yet, but maybe there's still chance. There's still time. That's good. It's about time as well. 9 to 8, the scoreline. 18th round coming at you. Shush with the Seuss. Always a good time if you can uh, if you can land one of those kills. Good angle for it as well. It's so nasty. Yeah, but it should be G2 walking away with this round. That's kind of the setup uh, for this one. I mean, I would be a bit worried. The scoreline kind of doesn't give it away. Maybe it's about to be 10 to 8. Feels like that's a pretty close game, but... Oh, nicely done! Sapping Amanek. He's running into all the misfortune right now. Nico with a double kill outside, though. And trying to tap it away, almost clicking away Stown as well. They've stolen... I'm not quite, they can't really do anything, can they? No, and Nico is the last guy you want to face in this sort of scenario. He makes it look so easy to get headshots with that AK. Kadian's going to find Nexa, though. That's that scout that was saved last round, chiming in. And Nico's pinned in as well. He's walking up behind him. This Mac 10, this should be a free kill. He's right around the corner. Nico's gonna be going down. And now there's 38 seconds down with a stunning headshot. It's gonna be up to Jax now to try and bring it back. One versus two. And he is out of time already. He needs to move real quick here. You can't play this one slowly. You 
got to get that bomb, and you have to have time to fake it at least once once you're in the bomb site. Otherwise, it's not going to be a chance, and they're already set up. They're a step ahead in this chess game. 18 seconds on the clock as he's running into the site. Not checking the corner, getting shot in the back, and that's a huge steal for G2. Stalm with the double, Shush with the double, and Heroic. Oh, they're going to be celebrating that round. And G2, that is something that happens very often with them. They're so good about locking down the following up rounds. Not possible for them. Shush with the Zeus at the beginning. And just getting bogged down. Wondering if this was a little bit of fear, a little bit of hesitation getting shown on the side of G2 when things start to go against them in the round. You start just trying to lock it down and stay put. But as we saw, that just gives time for Heroic to maneuver around you and get that flank going. Nico just got blindsided. So we're tied up around early here. Heroic should have been with G2 on double digits. Instead, it's G2 with the force by a handful of rifles, and now they're just gonna go accelerate onto the bomb site. Trying to be quick about it. Hunter's got one kill, but Reaper's inside with a terrific spray. Double kill on him. Now a three versus two. They do have a little bit of a space here. Maybe if they were quick, they could try and get the bomb down. Random shots are coming through, and Nico's almost winning that one. Nexa, has he got the timing? He's certainly thinking about it, and he beats down to the punch. That's a good start, but now Kane's weirdly on the T roof. What is happening? How does this oh. even happen? I thought maybe he was going to try and flash Tessas in from the ceiling. But he's just creeping down here. MP9 in hand. No bomb plan yet. G2 frozen in time as they try and find one more kill to try and get this round back. If they lose this round, it's an absolute nightmare for the G2 side of things. Timing is impeccable. Tessas with the kill. Nico, he's feeling very lonesome. Yep, that is the best move that he could have done. If only he had a Molotov to throw behind him so that he can't follow him, but he doesn't have that kind of luxury, and they're going to be right on top. They're coming in from every angle. They've got him locked in, boxed in, and killed Tessas. And it's 10 on the side of Heroic. Absolute steal. These freeze calls are really working against G2 in the end. Because again, Heroic are known for this on their CT side. They're known for being mobile. They're known for constantly taking risks and pushing for information. It's their play style. Kadian's been very clear about this in interviews as well. That when they're feeling their game, they're always on the aggression. They're always on the attack. And G2 right now finding it a little difficult to hang in there. They've gone and had and done the unthinkable assembly in the crowd. They've mixed Brazilian and Danish fans together. You know it's going to be crazy out there. <laughs> Just having too much of a good time. <laughs> That's how it goes. 10 to 9, 20th round. Oh. It's hard to say what this is, but it feels like heroic have kind of saved themselves a little bit here because I swear G2 were about to take over this entire game. But that round, the 18th round, that made a colossal difference in this game. Now they're going to try and see if they can get out, but they're running through the smoke or at least attempting it. Hard shot down from the M4 on the other side. Makes it a five versus three. Man. What's the plan for G2 to get back into this? Now they're suddenly out of money. It's just like the first half, though. That's the issue, because now G Heroic were able to get a few rounds on the board early in the first half because they broke G2's economy. And so on the CT side, you want those grenades. On the T side, it costs less money to get equipped. But right now, G2 are just struggling to get the bomb planted. That's a bonus 800 True. in the pocket and a, pretty much a set of nades if you can make that happen. And yet Heroic are just not allowing it. So G2, it feels like, and this was something that was mentioned by the analysts as well, that they have slow starts in these halves sometimes where they have to battle back they still end up with a respectable score line, but you're wondering where were they in the first five rounds of the half to really give them a dominant score line. And so it feels like right now, G2, again, they've kind of given Heroic a chance to get a few rounds on the board that they really shouldn't. I would love nothing more if the plan was just to, to boost Nico up on the red container outside and just have him shut it down with a, just AK headshots all across the board. Just say, you know what? He is just a level above everyone else in the server, so let's prove it. Let's, let's take him out. And then from there on out, I mean, even if it's just a one kill out of the yard, you can build so much behind it, but you have, you have the secret super weapon that is Nico. Use it. No timeout called either. I was curious to see if we were going to get one called by G2 here. It's not going to happen. They're going to go straight into it. So clearly sticking to the plan. Malek not feeling like this is the time to try and slow things down. The team is already in motion. And Nico, once again, out in the yard. Early aggression here from Heroic. They want to take this fight early. They know that G2 are the ones who are feeling like they're on the back foot and have to make a play. Heroic were willing to meet that. 
Just an opening kill there. Rico sneaking up past the smoke. This is the right idea. Make him the entry, get him the kills. There's the headshot to take down Tessis. It's a good start. No immediate follow up either for Heroic. No one can really revenge that kill. So they're just going to have to take it on the chin and play four and five instead. Could you match a double setup inside of the A bomb site, which. Again, when the, when, if the grenades start raining down on this part of the map, it could be pretty rough if, you're, if you play two people at the back of the A bomb site, because then everyone's just getting Molotov. It's down, it's close here though. Yep, it's fresh smoke goes down at the minute mark on Squeak. G2 just kind of waiting, sitting, because they know right now, Heroic are down a man. Heroic should be the ones who need to make some kind of play. Yeah, they're waiting for that. They're really expecting it too. And it hasn't happened yet out of nades on the CT side, so that's the other thing that the time accomplishes here. The slow play from G2 means the CT side has got no more nades to fiddle around with. A little bit of first chance here, maybe a crossfire could be set up. Stown gonna win the fight, he tries to get back into the corner, but they're running him down. Oh, that is a massive kill to take down Amanek, and now maybe they can actually save the round. 24 seconds, it's a three on three, they take the fight to Shush, and it's gonna be a quick trade, but refresh, that's third man on the bomb site that they were not expecting. They were probably doing that count out loud. There's one, there's two, where is the third man? And they realize too late, Nico, on his own with eight seconds on the clock and time is just running out way too quickly here. He's gonna be found. Refresh, nice double and heroic. Or oh, they're taking huge steps towards winning this opening map. The pressure is on and I'm pretty sure that was just attack timeout called by G2. So we're gonna have a moment here where it is gonna be on G2 to try and come up with something because it felt like that was it. It felt like Nico was getting a bit more proactive out in the yard. Yes. Got the drop on main as well. So that was an early kill. They put pressure on Stalin early as well with the AG early on uh, when Stalin was trying to go to secret, he got caught by Nico in the open. So a lot of pressure from G2 and yet it feels like G2 just got read like a book there. Heroic with the extra man on that upper bomb site. They weren't even considering, considering it as an option for G2 to go to the lower bomb site right now. And I mean, the whole part of that first strategy for G2 is the knockout pound against Stown. They have the, the initial peak, then the follow up flashbang. They wanted to kill him, smoke off mini, and then and then just focus on the rest of the A bomb side. But when he gets a double kill, I mean, th that plan is probably already done. Zooms, especially when you already have a smoke. That's the really painful one where you're trying to lurk your way out, you're trying to scrim your way out without using any utility. The only issue is you need to win that duel because you saw that smoke and flash go immediately after that opening kill from Stone. But by then the damage is done. He's already gotten away with it. Nexa though, All right, this is going to be the round of Eagle coming up here from G2. Could be a chance here for Tessis to shine. A deep smoke, they're going to make a pass. Lining up in that choke point, triple kill for Tessis. Brutal. That's the worst case scenario for G2. It's so nerve wracking, isn't it though? When you see him with the smoke, because you know they're going to run through. You know they're going to do it. And if he, if he is just a bit late, you know, switching out our pistol or rifle, something, it's, they're going to be through and shooting him in the face. So good, good stoppage there. But just, I always get so nervous when you see the pistols on the other side of a, a Molotov like that. You know they're going to smoke it, yeah, and then yeah. they're just going to come bursting through. The thing is, now that they one S is really the gun of uh, choice on the CT side, it's just so satisfying to see those sprays. Just so satisfying. It's like laser beams. Pew -pew. It's so good, isn't it? You were the best. You were right eventually, Sempo. Eventually, so it took a while. Took a while. Took a while, but the devs came around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to now. It's it is. Not. Oh. Well, game is up, and they are going to go down. Flawless anti-eco run here for Heroic. Tessis with the triple, and then just G2 getting the door closed on them when they try to go out towards uh, that vent. 13 rounds on the board for Heroic on this CT side. And here's the big buy round coming up for G2. Time to make some noise because this is it. We're approaching the end here on this first map. If Heroic can win this round, it's going to be so difficult for G2 to stop them. Yeah, a bit of a chant going on for G2 as well. We need it now more than ever. 14 to 9. What, what a feeling in this room. Okay, this is already a change though. Heavy presence in the yard from G2, straight down secret as well, and now Nico's clearing out. This is so big. Heroic have given them so much room to work with out here. He got flashed through by a teammate, and he's, he's got so deep map control. This is crazy. He, no, Heroic don't even know this right now. This could be just a knockout punch. Exactly the kind of trick you need to get by. You'd see by the way Stown is moving. He's running, stepping all over the place. He has no idea that someone could be here. He's deeply infiltrated the lineup. 
straight shot to take down Stown. But again, even though you can say, oh, maybe you should have played for the double kill. No, you think about the defense on the CT side. They are completely shattered right now. They have no idea where they can stand. Where is safe? You see Kadian almost getting shut down from that high ground position. It clears the way. They can run under that bomb site and get that bomb plant down as well. It's a three on four, but also a three on five on four, four here. But still, it is looking so good for G2 in this round. It's 80% it's of the way there just from that one kill. It's the must win round here. This, that actually, that first smoke may prompt them to rotate around towards ramp. It's looking like that's what's going to happen here. Nico is going to be held up top, so he's going to be the one on the flank and hoping to catch a rotation out of heroic. But in the meantime, you have Kadia just never expecting it. Amanek takes him out for free. That opens up the B-bomb site for business. G2, they, they need to accelerate and they need to win this round. 20 seconds. That's really the only worry that I have in this round is the time that's left. But Jax will make sure that is not an issue. Stellar headshot to come out. Shush will fall next. Oh, wow. This is, this is a round where they hit every single shot that they needed to, and then on top of them, completely out cold heroic. They were just in their brains from the minute they started. Next up with the final kill, 10 to 13. Oh, they needed that badly, and they need to keep building. Heroic were clearly expecting it to be much more mid aggression, like mid aggression, in, inner aggression, essentially. Because yes. they just had no presence in the yard at all this round, not expecting Nico to be out there that quickly. They were clearly expecting it to be action on the inside of the structure. And so Heroic, sometimes you just have to shake out that round. It's like, right, we thought one thing, we got it wrong. Forget about it, move on. The only brutal thing here is that um, this is going to force them to spend a tremendous amount of money, Heroic. And so that bank that they've been building, you know, this is what they have it for, but it's not going to last for long at this rate. G2, though, on the other side, full buy. Ready to go, and I'm curious to see if they decide to go for a rinse and repeat. Because, they, because Heroic didn't see how Nico wound up out there. They didn't see the flashes. They didn't see which smoke wall was used. They don't have any tells to, to warn them about what Nico did to get into the position that he got. Well, also, it probably means that Heroic will have to try and commit a lot more to keeping an eye on that at all times, which is something that G2 themselves then can use in, in setups later down the road, right? They could start to think, well, we know they're probably going to have someone hard on the outside yard here, so maybe we try and do a little bit of an earlier move towards, let's say, the vent. Nico, he's just holding it a little bit more passively now. There is the AWP on the other side on Kadian. We've seen how dangerous he could be with that weapon, so no one wants to really go and fight that. Tessis is coming out of secret as well, We're about to anyway. So they've got a pretty big presence out in yard this time. It's fakes on fakes. He's fully expecting early aggression from Heroic. Now we'll get the smoke wall thrown in, and Tessis, yep, he can still be the man of the hour. Or Heroic, he can still be the hero, especially with that Molotov. Gives him a bit of cover to work with here. Deep Molly, though, gonna force him back further. And G2 methodically clearing it out here. Yeah, good work. Almost running through their own fire to try and beat him to the punch. I think they know that he's there. This is a great way to take the yard, but the only the, the downside, what you're paying with, is time. That's the issue, right? You're going to run out of time if you keep playing this slowly, and that worries me. Nexa setting up the Molotov to go down behind the silo, and we'll see if it's going to be so The bomb is still outside. What are they doing, G2? This is crazy to me. They are so slow in this round. I, I, just, I can feel the hair standing up at the back of my neck because this is going to be cutting it down to the last possible second. Refresh, fighting Hunter now. If he gets that kill, that might just be the round over with the rest of them trying to come in, but there's a smoke up in Mini. Oh, this is madness. G2 running into the blender, and it's ready on the other side. Heroic, they are looking sharp at the moment. Four versus two. Nico and Nexa, they just can't do anything. They left it so late in the round. The Molotov, yeah, that might get the kill, and doesn't even do that. <laughs> Refresh. <laughs> oh, taking him with him, sitting inside of the flames. That. That's cutting it too close. Is this the lack of killer instinct on the side of G2 that's getting shown here? Because it feels like that's a round where you would have enough room to work with. You got Jax in a position to stop any kind of secret rotations. You got Nico eventually up into the high ground as well. So it feels like you had your options lined up for you. It was just that, that instinct to go, right, before it was too late to really put the pressure on Heroic. I mean, the timing for Hunter to run into whoever, whoever was pushing that squeak door is also crazy, and that is a great move for Heroic to do that because that takes, again, all of the momentum away from G2. Suddenly, they're not attacking the bomb side; they're trying to stay alive. Nico almost made the cross, but not quite. Stown will take him down, four and five. The rest of them trying to make the path. I don't know if there was a gap, doesn't seem like it. 
So just going to be making their way downstairs, but they've lost Nico. The we got two rounds away now. This is their map pick, of course. Yes. So maybe not completely unexpected, but love to see G2 find their way back. They did such a great job coming back into the first half. I feel like the second half, though, they've been struggling with the economy. And Heroic, once they stole those couple of rounds with the Deagle and the Scout, everything changed. Well, we may actually get to see what G2 are made of here when it goes against them as well. So now I'm going to catch Nexa out in the open. And G2 have yet to lose a map this tournament, Manders. And here you are in the semifinals. Is this when you want to start learning what it feels like <laughs> to lose maps in a tournament? It's a bit late in the game. Definitely. We're going to see. Whoa, cutting it close there, Cadian. Yeah, but he wanted to stop the bomb from going down in, in the default position, so a little bit scary. Stown, though, is finding kills everywhere. Third kill of the round for him. Hunter and Jax, two versus four, to try and hold on to this and keep the dream alive, at least on this map. And now it's all Hunter. I don't think they know that he's back here, but, well, they definitely do now. Shush will find him and kill him, and that is a big round. 15 on the board for Heroic. And part of the problem here really is because Stown, the second kill that he got was on Nexa, who was all the way out by basically T spawn. What they wanted was the three man setup to go get the bomb in B, and for Nexa to be the real late lurk to come in and shoot people in the back end. As soon as Stown found that kill, the, the rest of the plan just doesn't really work out the same way. 15 to 10, heroic on map point. There's the trophy that they're fighting for as well. Map point for heroic, timeout called by G2. Five rounds separating these two teams. And this is prompting the Krieg to come out. Nico fixing to bring the heat here. Still one of the few players who's got the aim and who's willing to buy one of these rifles. He's got 20, he's, him and Stout are neck and neck right now. 23 and 17, 23 and 16. So they're battling to try and bring this one through. Stout has been terrific. a revelation in this tournament so far. Yeah, one of the heavy hitters for Heroic. Everybody's had their moments. Refresh even starting to catch up as well. He had a bit of a cold start to the map. He's now sitting on 16 kills. He's been one of the top rated players for Heroic so far this tournament. So, thing, I mean, Heroic just continue to deliver. It's absurd how good these guys are after this period. And with all the doubt going into it, but there's Nico. He best Stavin outside. Headshot on him, man advantage for G2. That's what you needed to do. Find that kill. He, he is the main problem that they've been facing outside. So yeah, send Nico. Four versus five. Still mostly gravitating around that lobby position. A bunch of people there. Haven't seen too many crazy lobby crunches coming out either from the heroic side, but it is good to be prepared because it's one of those things you probably only do once in a CT side. You, you don't do it all the time. But if you're a little bit careless on the T side and you've got like one or two people who are hanging around and, and suddenly the flashes and the and the three-way push comes in, it could be devastating. So happy to see G2 be aware of that potential danger that could come down the road. Nico. The flashes there, and oh, the smoke instead. He maybe could have had the shot, but Amanek clean and on the point to take down Kadian. G2, five rounds in a row is what they need. It is a good start right here. 37 seconds on the clock as well. The bomb, oh, now there comes the lobby attempt. They're trying to push forward. This might be the only way they can win this round. A little bit of a fight, but Hunter stands tall. It's all fine. The reason that was dangerous is there was not that much time left, and Nexa was right there with Hunter with the bomb. So if somehow they get both the kills, the bomb is in lobby, Heroic could still win the round, but it's a good, good round, 11 to 15. It's terrific stuff, and once again, I mean, G2 right now going into this had a terrific scoreline as far as uh, man advantages are concerned. They're not a team to drop at 81% win rate, win in a 5v4, so if Nico can find you that opening kill on Stalin, the team is just so good at locking it down from there on out. We just got a perfect example of it, them just whittling down that defense one man at a time. The host making a run. Right through the smoke. Oh, he's so brave Perfect right now. Time. Molotov as well. Stown, he's got his number here. Oh, the smoke. It's going to put out the Molotov at the very least. But you can tell. The flash going over the top of those smokes is so perfect. It just sets it up for Nico to go right through. Stown ate that one, and he barely gets out of there alive. Down to half health. Rotation coming in now from Heroic to try and help their teammate out. Nico has to worry about being in the right place at the right time. He's checking everything. It's great that they survived the initial burst there from Nico because that's the whole power behind that. If you just 
charges out there, flash and gets a kill. That is, uh, that's hard to deal with. Now they've got Shush and CT spawn, so he's, if Nico can't sneak past like he did earlier, or at least he's gonna have to fight hard for it. 47 seconds now. They are making their way through Squeak. It's gonna be the entire rest of G2 to try and just blow out into that bomb site. There we go, there's the first point of contact. Hunter with the opening kill, and it's down again to fall. Great stuff here for G2, and probably the world should think about saving here if they can. Sure, she's gonna stay alive, but it isn't worth it. This is about the money. They just need one more round heroic. No point in giving it up. I thought Tessas was just gonna leave the creek behind for a second there. Took a look down at it, like, no, get out of here with that garbage. But he's gonna hold on to it. <laughs> Saving it for the next round as well. I mean, every gun matters at this point for Heroic, and it would have been a disaster, an utter disaster, had they lost this round and lost their rifles, because it's just going to put them back to square one. You can see their economy is in shambles right now on the side of Heroic. G2 showing that they've still got some fight in them. And that's the other thing about these uh, these playoffs so far, Anders, is just how even it's been between the teams. No team is getting blown out here. You're not having single-digit scores for the losers. It's all double digits, it's all close. It just shows how competitive it is at the top of Counter-Strike right now. So 12th really round on the board for G2. <laughs> there you go, man came prepared. Fantastic. 15-12, 28th round. I mean, it, they're right on that doorstep. They have everything lined up for them here, Heroic. But Stown's had a couple of rounds now where he's been the, the target and he's lost those fights. They figured out, they identified where it is that he's going. I mean, he's essentially playing Nico's role out there where he's just kind of hanging around mini, hanging around here, he's trying to find picks. So Hunter and Nico, they know how to adapt to that situation. They know how to catch him out. It's a matter of just getting his locks down. And you saw last round, it was just fortunate. Drums of war, some love. Okay, then. And that's where we are, 15 to 12. They need just a couple of more opening it's really not that much a couple of more rounds where nico gets the opening kill outside and we're good to go for overtime heroic they need to avoid that at all cost g2 are such a scary team right now if you don't put them away you might just live to regret it three m4a1 and an awp on the side oh. of heroic Look at that from Nico, though. Look at how fast he's down into the halls this time. I know. He's entered some kind of bloodlust right now. He's just out hunting. He wants, he wants to kill them all. Kamenek goes down. Oh, Tessis is here. Oh, he doesn't even reload. He wanted a headshot, but he is going to go down. Just shows up, though, with a Krieg. Nico that is a powerful setup at the ramp. Just way too many people there. Refresh has come flanking in behind to pick up that AK. Bomb is lost. Nico. How do you possibly do this? Indeed, it's 1v2 now. Fortunately for him, he's still got a minute. This all happened very early on in the round. So he's still got a minute to work with here. And Heroic have no idea where he is on the map now. He could be anywhere. So there is the element of surprise. You can see that by Heroic right now, just trying to have their backs to a wall and watch each other over each other's shoulders at this point because they have no idea where Nico is. So he has the element of surprise going into this one. And he's just going to have to fight them outright and kill them outright. I don't think he's going to have time for any shenanigans here. There's the initial peak. This is where they need to put them away. Don't let G2 get back in the game, Heroic. One versus two, 30 seconds left. It is their map pick, and he's trying to get them to help him, but no! Shush will take him down. 